In the 1950s, as car culture in the United States began to change the face of the nation's travel patterns, auto builders were determined to tap whatever markets were necessary in order to reap as many profits as possible. To this end, the Chrysler Group decided they'd take the concept one step further by creating a car specifically designed around the gentler sex, and thus the Dodge La Femme was born, an option package that was lathered in all things stereotypically female, but failed to understand that, regardless of gender, car choice extended beyond whether or not it was painted pink. The incentive to build the La Femme started following the end of World War II, when rapid changes in society saw more and more women now entering the workplace in higher paying jobs, such as managers, lawyers, doctors, scientists, and small business owners, rather than the previous convention of being homemakers and housewives with no requirement to commute. In the face of this shift, car companies wanted to capitalize on the new trend, fueled further by a booming post-war economy, new developments in motoring technology such as power steering, power brakes and automatic transmissions, and the creation of extensive highways and interstates. While adverts and TV commercials frequently featured women benefiting from their model of choice, establishing a rapport of being easy to drive and practical for both work and leisure, the Chrysler Group were eager to go the extra mile, and chose instead to develop a car that was squarely aimed towards the female driver. The concept of making a car exclusively for women wasn't a new one, as in 1923, auto engineer Thomas Pullinger, owner of the Arrol Johnston Company, was persuaded by his daughter Dorothy to design a car for women called the Galway, which differed from its counterpart by having the addition of a rear-view mirror, a more reliable engine, extra storage space, a raised seat for better driver visibility, and was also smaller and lighter, as well as having the handbrake on the centre console next to the driver's position rather than under the dashboard like on other models of the time but this failed to sell in great numbers and was discontinued by 1928. In 1954, two concept cars based on the contemporary Chrysler New York and Newport hardtop were built, called the La Comte and La Comtesse, or the Count and the Countess, these being cosmetically modified versions of the New Yorker fitted with a plexiglass roof, a continental kit and Kelsey Hayes wire wheels, but also styled to appeal to either male, Comte, or female, Comtesse, demographics. The single Comte, therefore, was decked out in masculine colours, in this case black over bronze, while the five Comtesse show cars sported feminine colours, labelled dusty rose with a pigeon grey roof, with the idea being essentially to sell the cars as pairs to suit the rising trend of two car families in suburbia, one for the husband, the other for the wife. Under the hood, the car was fitted with the same 235 horsepower Chrysler Hemi Firepower V8 with fully automatic power flight transmission as the New Yorker and also had power steering and power brakes. Although the Comte and the Comtesse were basically proof-of-concept machines toured at auto shows across America during 1954, the Comtesse drew significant attention due to its outlandish, feminine-inspired looks, and this was enough to spur on Chrysler to develop the idea into a production model, while the comparatively unremarkable Comte was dropped and later scrapped. Contrary to popular belief, the Dodge La Femme was not a standalone model, but instead an option package for the 1955 model Dodge Custom Royal Lancer, which cost $143, or 1376 in 2020. With it, the discerning owner received a heather rose and sapphire white paint job, pink rosebud interior tapestry with pale pink vinyl trim, a pink umbrella, a pink raincoat, a pink rain bonnet, a pink handbag, a pink lipstick holder, and a pink keystone-shaped purse that could be stowed in a compartment in the back of the passenger seat. Within the purse was a face powder compact, lipstick case, cigarette case, comb, cigarette lighter, and change purse, all made of faux tortoiseshell plastic or pink calfskin and gold toned metal, these being designed by Evans of Chicago, a major chain that specialised in fine garments and accessories for women during the 1950s. Otherwise, the La Femme, mechanically, was no different to the custom Royal Lancer, with the same platform, drivetrain, body shape, and 4.4 litre Red Ram V8 producing 183 horsepower giving the car a 0-60 time of 11.9 seconds, a top speed of 103 miles an hour, and an average fuel consumption of 15.8 miles per gallon. The La Femme was eventually launched in 1955, and was aimed squarely at female drivers through a three-fold promotional leaflet, describing all of the car's features and how it improved one's image on the road, although marketing for the car was limited basically to the leaflet and a few other adverts, with no television, radio or billboard promotions having ever been produced. Furthermore, as there were thousands of Dodge dealerships across the United States, not every one received a demonstration car, therefore prospective buyers had no way to test drive the La Femme before purchase. Otherwise, for those who did encounter the La Femme, it was seen less as a viable alternative to a regular family sedan, and more a quirky gimmick, 
with female drivers taking or leaving the garish pink styling, while instead preferring cheaper models that could do the job just as well. Chrysler was undaunted though, and in 1956 the car was relaunched with a variety of cosmetic changes, while an executive correspondence to Dodge dealers stated that the La Femme was a stunning success. The revised La Femme replaced the heather rose and sapphire white scheme with a misty orchid and regal orchid colour scheme, and the interior featured La Femme only seat patterns, headliner, interior paint and carpet. These bespoke fabrics, however, proved difficult to reproduce due to their limited production run, and therefore when they became worn or damaged, they would have to be replaced by a non-original alternative. The seat coverings were made of a heavy white cloth with random organic seeming patterns of short lavender and purple loops, in a manner similar to loop pile carpeting, while the headliner cloth was heavy white fabric with many tiny random splashes of gold paint, and the carpeting was loop pile with several shades of lavender and purple. Furthermore, the boxes behind the seats were changed for 1956 to accommodate the raincoat, rain cap and umbrella, and the keystone shaped purse was dropped. As with the custom royal of that year, the option of a 5.1 litre Dodge D500 V8 was also available, producing 230 horsepower, giving the car a 0 to 60 time of 9 seconds, a top speed of 109 miles an hour, and an average fuel consumption of 12.3 miles per gallon. Regardless, the revised 1956 La Femme did little to spur on sales, and in 1957, the car was dropped when the custom Royal range was revised for the new model year. As the car was only an optional trim package, exact assembly figures were never broken out from the overall Dodge production numbers, but it's estimated that less than 2,500 were built over its two-year run. Of those, around 60 are known to still exist today, at least 40 from the 1955 model and 20 from the 1956 model, of which three are confirmed as factory built with the optional D500 engine. Since the end of the La Femme, limited production option packages have been more centred around either celebrity, event or brand models, including the likes of the Tom Brady Aston Martin Vanquish S Volante, the 2012 London Olympic Edition Mini Cooper S, and the Grey Goose Vodka Rolls-Royce Phantom 7. Perhaps the closest a car maker has come to creating a female-centric model was the Seat Mi by Cosmopolitan magazine, a feminine angled version of the regular Mi that differed very little from the standard model except for a few cosmetic changes. Fundamentally, the main incentive for either gender to buy a car is based less on its colour scheme or whether it comes with trinkets solely geared to their respective demographic, but more on the overarching appeal of the car itself, including its performance, fuel economy, styling, features, safety and ease of use. To this end, the La Femme fell into a very niche market, and while it's become something of a cult car that often turns heads for its overt femininity, the final product was essentially just a car that appealed to those who value form over function, and centred their purchase around image alone. Thanks again for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, why not leave a like, and be sure to subscribe for more great content. Thank you very much, take care, and I'll see you next time.